morning, great morning, great morning. And thank you, Tanya. Thank you, of course, to our media team and most definitely to our readers. And thank you each and every one for being here with us today. I hope that you are enjoying this cool weather. What a relief. We give thanks for it. Well, this morning, our lesson is entitled, It's All the Same Stuff. It is all the same stuff. And if you were on in the beginning of the service and the opening song this morning, which was entitled, It's All the Same Stuff. And so we're talking about how it all works together and it all works together for good. The, in the song this morning, the songwriter and the vocalist who was Eddie Watkins Jr. If you listened to the words, you could hear Eddie saying that God is all there is and everything we see is all the same stuff. And everything we experience is all the same stuff in one way or another. And he says that something very key, he says, we are free to rearrange this stuff, this substance, any way we want. He says that easy is the other side of tough and smooth is the other side of rough and down is the other side of up and we are free to rearrange this substance stuff any way we want. Well, when we take another look at the scripture this morning, in particular, the scripture from Romans 8 and 35, the scripture reminds us that who can separate us from the love of Christ? Now, if you're new to the unity movement, when we speak of Christ, we're not speaking of Jesus the man, but we are speaking of the presence of God within us, the individualized presence of God within us, the presence of God within each individual person. So who can separate us from that love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Who or what? can separate us from this love of Christ. You see, this scripture is a truth statement that God is the one and only power in the universe. And it refutes the thinking and the belief that there is a power in opposition to God or a power in opposition to what is the highest good of humankind. And you may have in your spiritual or religious journey, you may have experienced those teachings of a power in opposition to God, another power, a duality, a second power. But you see here, since God is the one power, the one intelligence and wisdom, the energy, the love, the substance, and the truth, since God is the all in all, as all, is all, is the all in all, then all things, think about this, since God is all there is, all things, and God is good, all things must be working together for good. And we are not subject to any opposing power. All sustained, loving, prosperous, healing experiences rest on this truth. And this is true for you, and it's true for me. All things work together for good. For God is good, and God is all there is. Listen to the statement of Charles Fillmore, one of the two co-founders of the unity movement, concerning uh, allness or oneness. Charles says that oneness is not only a belief, but it is a practice. And he says that spiritually mature, spiritual maturity occurs when we listen to God only as a sheep listens to its shepherd. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, God is all there is. God is good. All is good. So, 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 so 
What, what, how did this happen to me? What, explain how this happened to me. How could I have experienced this suffering in an experience? Or why am I experiencing such bewilderment and turmoil? When there is only one power, God, when all works together for good, when good is all there is. But my friends, I want you to know that this is a prevalent question on the minds of many people. And perhaps it's on your mind or has been at some time on your mind. I know that at, at some point back in my history, be, before I began studying truth, it was a question in my mind. How can you refute how can you deny reality when some of these things are happening to people? Well, let's take a look at it from, from this point of view using this example. If you or I were given a tool, let us just say that the tool is a hammer and we were given this hammer to use. You could use that tool or I could use that tool to prepare or repair a wall, hmm. we could use that tool to build a table. Uh huh. We could use that tool to build a chair, to create a chair, great. And we would benefit from, we would be blessed from the use of the tool and how we used the tool to build the chair or the table or to repair the wall or whatever we use the tool for because we were using the tool for good and we would benefit from that good. At the same time, that very same tool, the hammer, could be used in a destructive manner. It could be used to break an item maybe that didn't belong to us, belong to somebody else or any other destructive way or that tool, that hammer that could be used for good could just sit in the toolbox for days, for weeks, for months, for years, just sit in the toolbox. Well, this same idea, this same premise holds true for spiritual principle. Experiences that seem to not be working out so good for us they seem to not be working out for our highest good. They seem to not be working out for our highest best are generally the result of not understanding the principle that undergirds that situation, not being clear on the principle or just misusing the principle unintentionally or maybe even intentionally or in action concerning the principle, not putting the principle into action, not doing anything about what's happening. Principles such as the principle of gratitude, thankfulness, the principle of generosity, giving and sharing, the principle of forgiveness, releasing, the principle of faith, of honesty, of patience, of humility, of willingness, of love, integrity, open-minded accountability. As we practice and live these principles, these truths, we live a more relaxed and we live more freely and more peacefully. Because at that point, when we're living from spiritual principle, we are living from the point of love, not fear. We are living from the point of love and we're living in love and not in fear. You see, these principles, these ideas, these rules of action, they're all created from the same stuff, all created from spiritual substance, but it's how we use it. It's how we use it. Ah. It's all the same stuff. If you ever notice that a person who tends to be accountable for what they do or what they say is a person who always, who also seems to be in integrity with what they're saying and what they're doing. Hmm. It's all the same stuff, all made from the same substance. 
and we can use it however we choose. So every action that we take and our conversations, especially with ourselves and with others, all of that is based in love or the misuse of love, in principle or the misuse of principle. It's all one, it's all the same stuff. Principle is principle, principle is principle, principle is principle. We can use that principle in love or in fear. And the misuse of love is fear. The misuse of humility is egotism. And egotism, the bottom line to egotism is fear. The misuse of accountability is blaming. The misuse of accountability is blaming. And the bottom line to blaming is fear. I can remember a time some years back, I was in an office in, in Manhattan and someone walked into the office. It, it was an employee who walked, it was raining, raining, raining heavily outside that day. And apparently this person had walked through uh, rain puddles and, and had a lot of mud on their shoes. And so they walked into the office and this office had been newly carpeted. They walked into the office and mud was on their shoes and they walked across the new carpet with the mud on their shoes and the water dripping from their raincoat. And the office manager said to the person, when you walked across the new carpet with your muddy shoes, and dripping raincoat, it made a mess. And the person said to the office manager, but no one told me to take off my shoes. That's a lack of accountability. When, when we wanna blame or we wanna point the figure somewhere else, the misuse of accountability is blaming. And the misuse of integrity is dishonesty. And all of that negativity is based in fear. See, there's only one power and that's love. There's only one power and that's God. There's all, it all comes from substance, but it's how we use it. When we misuse it, there's not another power. It's the misuse of the one power or the not using of the one power. So fear in and of itself is an option only if we want to remain in the same place and space where we are right now. Fear is an option only if we want to remain where we are and we don't want to move on in life, in our thinking, in our feeling, in our experiences. Life either expands or it shrinks according to our thinking, our feeling, our faith, and our actions. Nothing in the universe is standing still. Everything is in motion. So our life is either expanding or shrinking according to how we think, what we think, what we feel about ourselves, about God, about others, about life, and according to our faith and our actions or inactions. Hmm. I'm sure that you have experienced that it takes strength to stand in integrity, especially when you are the only person standing there or you and one other are standing there while thousands are standing in integrity. I think we're seeing that in politics today. It takes strength to stand in integrity and to stand in accountability. It takes strength to come from love when someone is dancing on your last half of nerve. It takes strength at times to stand in love, to come from love, not weakness, but strength. So spiritual principle spiritual principles, love, willingness, 
humility, integrity, accountability, faith, gratitude, generosity, spiritual principle. They are rules, hear this, that guide us concerning the best action to take in order to experience a situation with strength and resilience and free of stress and chaos. I'm going to, I'm going to say that again. A spiritual principle is a rule that guides us or a guide that guides us concerning the best action to take in order to experience situations with strength and resilience and free of stress and chaos. A spiritual principle is a guide for us to follow in what actions we should take. Should take. And it all is the same stuff. It's all substance how we choose to use that substance. If we were to take a look at the 12 powers that we talk about in unity, we could see that it's all the same stuff. Love and wisdom are connected. Imagination and will are connected. You need the will in order to activate and take action on the imagination and, and the ideas in the imagination, zeal and life, energy and life are, are the same. It's all the same stuff, my friends. So when we grasp, when we grasp, when we really get, and we have to pray on it, think on it, and contemplate on it, this idea of substance, this idea of oneness, this idea of allness, this idea of unity, this idea... We have to really grasp that and, and get it in the mind and in the heart. And, and we tend to, at that point, not be so anxious, not be so nervous, not be so in such anxiety about what happens in our life because we have an, a base. We have a firm base. We, we're grounded in that truth that this is all the same stuff in different forms. It looks different. It may feel different but it's all the same stuff. It's all God, there's good in it, and it's all working together for good, irregardless of how it looks on the outside. It's all working together in some way. It's all working together for my highest good. You know, I was reading the news online this week. I read the news online. I don't purchase the paper and, and I don't watch it on, on television because I really don't want um, news reporters blaring out this negativity at me. And I don't want that energy coming out in, into my home. And so I read the news online so that I can pick and choose what I'm reading at time. And so in the course of the week, I, I, I look at and I read the, the New York Times. I, I read the Wall Street Journal. I read sometimes the Huffington Post. And what I was noticing is that the articles in the various papers are just about the same. It doesn't matter. It just seems to not matter what the quality of the paper is and, and who they think their market is and how, what level they think their market is. It seems to be the same stuff. And I was saying to myself, because it's filled with negativity, the gun violence, the this, the that, the other, who did what to who. And I was saying to myself, there is no way that a person can read this every day or allow this energy to come into their home every day through the news on, on the television or the radio or read it in a newspaper, whether they're reading a newspaper or online. There's no way that a person can read or listen to this on a daily basis and not become stressed. There is no way 
that that energy can come to us day after day after day of the day and not be stressed. And all of that energy is the same stuff. It's all spiritual principle turned inside out, misused and abused for what makes money. For what makes money. It's all the same stuff. Everything in life, it's all the same stuff. And as the song said, we can choose how we arrange and rearrange it. We have that choice. Thank God and praise God for choice. Let me share this with you. It's written by Ralph Marston. And it's called if you so choose. If you so choose, the challenges can make you stronger. If you so choose, the disappointment can make you more determined. If you so choose, every mistake can lead to greater understanding and effectiveness. If you so choose, every frustration can help you to be more patient and more persistent. If you so choose, even the unexpected setbacks can bring new and positive possibilities. And if you so choose, you can find value and fulfillment in every circumstance. If you so choose, each day can be filled with even more joy than the one before. And if you so choose, even the most seemingly random event can work in your favor. If you so choose, you can remain steadily focused no matter what distractions may attempt to throw you off course. And if you so choose, you can look back on this day with no regret. Life is filled with an endless variety of circumstances, opportunities, and possibilities. And if you so choose, you can make the best and make the most of it all in this and every moment, if you so choose, if I so choose. Hmm. There is only God. There is only God. It is all the same stuff, appearing and reappearing in various form in different form. experiences coming at us and if we find ourselves having the same experience over and over and over again with different people through different channels in different situations but the same experience then there's something that we have not grasped don't beat up on yourself there's just something we have not grasp is something that we haven't we haven't gotten to as yet and we want to pray on it think on it contemplate on it meditate on it and get what it is if this same message is coming to us through various personalities and remember personality is not the essence of us my friend personality is not who we are Personality is simply the way we express what we know or the way we do not express what we know or do not know. So personality is the channel through which or the vehicle through which we express, but it is not our true self. Our true self is the Christ the Christ presence within, the individualized presence of God that, that lives and has its being within each 
of us. So who or what can separate us from that Christ and from that love of Christ, that free flowing love of ideas and that givingness of the Christ presence? Who or what can separate us? Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, from all there is, from the substance. Nothing can separate us. The scripture says, shall trouble or hardship or personality or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or a sword? Who can separate us from that love? What experience can separate us from that love? Of Christ. There is nothing because there is the only one and that one lives within us. Nothing can, and even if we come to the point where we feel we feel separated from God, it's just a feeling. It's just a false thought. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing. And as we open our minds and our hearts, we become the channel for the expression of that allness, of that oneness, of that unity, of that togetherness. The favor of the Lord, the favor of God, the favor of the Christ presence, the favor of the universal essence, favor of divine energy, the favor of universal mind, whatever you choose to call the one power, the favor of the one power is upon us and it prospers the work of our hands. As the vocalist Cheryl Renee sound, sang this morning, use me, oh God, Use me as a channel, as a vehicle, as a vessel of your expression of that oneness, of that allness, of that unity, because it's all the same stuff and it all works together and it works together for our good. We are open and receptive to receive it. God bless you. I bless you. And so it is. Namaste. So take a deep breath right here and right now. And just allow and feel the divine energy as it just so peacefully moves across your mind as you feel it in your heart and just that energy moves and flows through the body temple. Just feel how peaceful it is. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.